Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to a new chapter in grade 12 technical drawing, sectional views. In today's lesson, I will introduce you to the basic terminology and common practice of sectioning. Don't worry if you don't even know what sectioning means. But first, let's briefly revise the lessons we have learned from our last lesson. In our last lesson, we have seen the primary and secondary auxiliary views. The primary auxiliary views is used to show the true shape of an inclined surface on an object, while the secondary auxiliary view is used to show the true shape of an oblique plane on an object. Partial auxiliary views, on the other hand, show the auxiliary projection of the inclined or oblique surface only, while complete auxiliary views show the auxiliary projection of the whole object, including the principal surfaces. Half auxiliary views show half of the true shape of the symmetrical object. To find the true shape of a slanting curve surfaces, First, divide the foreshortened view into a number of parts and project those points to the auxiliary plane through the edge view. Then, join those points carefully with a French curve to find the true shape and size of the slanting curved surface. Well, on our new chapter, we will see how to see through a complicated object so that we can visualize the interior part or the parts which are assembled to make that object. Not only visualizing, but we need to draw a sectional view of an object so that we give more complete picture of that object. Notice that a sectional view is a conventional representation in which a part of an object, structure or mesh is imagined to be cut by one or several planes or broken away so as to expose the interior. A design of a house cannot be clear enough if the given drawing just show the outside features of the building. So, if we imagine cutting the house vertically we will have a sectional view which shows all the floors, doors, and furniture of the building from side. This section shows the room height and width of the rooms which are cut by the cutting plane. This is called longitudinal section. Let's take the house again. The longitudinal sections fail to show us the depth of the rooms. So, let's have another section. This time, let's cut the house horizontally. Now, we can see the length and depth of every room from a single floor. This section is called cross-section. In this case, this can be called a floor plan. 
Again, let's see other examples from the cross section. Sectional views have an important role in the design and production industry. Before you get to know the use and types of sectional views, let's test your knowledge of the alphabets of lines from your grade 11 lessons. Try to find out the types of lines along with their dimensions in which they are drawn. Welcome back. The alphabets of lines is used to graphically communicate between professionals. These lines are conventionally used throughout the world. Let's just revise some of them which will help us build our knowledge in sectioning an object. An object line is used to show the visible edges of an object. It's drawn with solid thick line. Hidden line shows the hidden edge of the object. The hidden edge represents the surface of the object, which are covered by the visible surface of the object. The hidden lines are medium thick, short dashes, which are drawn with 3 mm long with 1 mm gap. The cutting plane line and the section line are directly related to sectional views. They are used when the sectional views are present on our drawing. This is cutting plane line. In case on which the hidden feature of an object is so important and worth viewing. 
The imaginary cutting plane line is used to cut through the object so that we can see the interior of an object. This cutting plane is represented by a cutting plane line. Cutting plane lines can be drawn into two types. The first cutting plane line is thick, one long and two short dashes. The long dash is between 18 to 36 millimeters long, while the short dash is 3 millimeters long. The gap between dashes is 1.5 millimeters long. The second cutting plane line is consists of uniform thick short dashes which are 6 millimeters with 1.5 millimeters gap. Both cutting plane lines have arrows on both ends which are bended 90 degrees to the side on which the sectional view is needed. Cutting plane lines are usually labeled with a letter or a numeral. The labeling should be written on both ends of the arrow heads and also under the sectional view. This is the sectional view of the object. All hidden lines are replaced with an object line because we can now see the interior parts of the object orthographically. The solid surface which are touched by the cutting plane line, in other words the surfaces which are cut are shaded with section lines. Section lines are thin and they are usually drawn in 45 degrees which are parallel to each other. They are used to show the sliced part of the object. The characteristics of section line can vary or totally change if a drafter wants to imply more than just a section. For example, if the drafter wants to show the materials of the object from which it's made, he doesn't have to write the name of the material as steel or wood. Rather, he can use different pattern of lines on places where the section lines should be. This is called section lining. Whatever materials has been cut by cutting plane, the cut surface is indicated by section lining, sometimes called cross hatching. The general symbol which is used for representing cast iron is used for most purposes. Sectioning symbols are sometimes used on drawings to indicate different materials such as cast iron, steel, wood, concrete, brick, earth, rubber, marble, etc. However, exact specifications by notes or otherwise are necessary to completely describe the material. For some purposes, certain distinctive materials may be indicated on exterior views by using the symbols shown. Well, I'm sure sectional views will be much useful for you too. Since you bear the knowledge of multi-view drawing and the use of cutting plane line, let's have a quick discussion about the following image given on the screen. Try to find which drawing is the right sectional view of the object according to its position and why.
Welcome back. Did you know that the direction of the arrow head of the cutting plane lines is the key for the position of the sectional view and also to which direction it faces? Let's see. As you can see from this illustration, if the direction of the cutting plane faces to the right, the sectional view lies on the right side of the object, its true sectional view can be achieved from the combination of the object line and the hidden lines from the side views. The same rule works for the horizontal sectional views too. Well, sometimes the cutting plane coincides with the lines used for cutting plane line. In this case, we need to figure out which types of line should be drawn. There is a rule called line of precedence to go around this problem. When a cutting plane coincides with center line, the cutting plane takes precedence. When a cutting plane line would obscure important details, just the ends of the line outside the view and the arrows can be shown. While drawing the sectional view, appropriate lining of the sectional line is also important. Drawing sectional lines is also called hatching. Adjacent areas divided by a visible line in a sectional view never contain the same hatching. Hatching is never bounded by a hidden line. Hatching should not run parallel or perpendicular to a major feature. If the section part of the object has feature which is angled 45 degrees, then the angle of section lines can be changed as well. 30 degrees or 60 degrees may be used. Different section lines with different angles can be used at the same time if the section is consisting of different parts assembled to make a single element. The pitch or distance between section lines is governed by the size of a surface. It's usually 2 or 3 millimeters. Care should be exercised in setting a pitch. While drawing the section lines, you should keep seeing the lines which are already drawn by sliding the drawing instrument away from them or else the gap in between or the pitch might keep increasing or decreasing. Well students, having the above rules, I'm sure you are able to tell the correct sectional view from the wrong one. Well, here is another activity which contains the correct section method with the wrong one. Discuss with your classmates to tell which one is the right one.
Well, did you find the correct ones? And did you notice the mistakes on the others? Good. Let's see the solutions together, shall we? Students, I'm sure you know the two types of cutting plane lines. That's when it's classified by the type of line used to draw. Cutting plane lines can also drawn bended to show the important interior part of an object. This way, we can have different types of sectioning. Before we see that, let's do a quick activity to get your mind ready. I'll give you three dimensional sectional drawings and you try to sketch the necessary multi view of the object along with the sectional view. Try your best, but don't worry if it troubles you. Discuss with your friend if you will. I hope that was fun. So, did you find out the different types of sections yet? We will see each of them on the next program. But it's good 
if we highlight them first. Let's see them now. The names of these different types of sections are self-explanatory, but note their cutting plane lines on the two-dimensional views. This one is full section, it uses a straight cutting plane line across the object. The others are half section, offset section, broken out or partial section, revolved section, and removed section. Well, students, in today's lesson, we have seen the introduction to a sectional views. Let's briefly revise what we have learned for today. In today's lesson, we briefly revised the part of alphabets of lines which mainly used in drawing a sectional view. Sectioning is a technique by which the object is sliced and the cutaway view of the part is then drawn. We have seen the different types of section lining used to represent a specific kind of materials from which the drawn object is made of. We have also seen the different rules in setting the cutting play line and the sectional view, line of precedence and section line drawing. Finally, we briefly visited the types of sectional views according to the shape of the cutting play line. Well, students, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Keep on practicing on the exercise from your textbook. Teacher, please assist the students while doing their checkpoints. On our next lesson, we will learn about the full, half and offset sections. Until then, thank you, teacher, and thank you, students. Goodbye.